Hello, everyone. This is Derek with Reef Automation. This is episode eight of the GHL versus Apex series. In this episode, we're going to go over some of the features that both the GHL and the Apex have. So let's get started. Um, we're going to get started on the Apex. Um, the Apex has a webcam, and that's one of the features you can see right here. That's the little fish icon. If we click on the gear icon, this is where you define the webcam. Now, the webcam can be used in five different formats, either a motion JPEG, uh, HTTP Live, or an MPEG-4 or an H.264. It also supports OGG and WebM. So this is where you would define your webcam, and then it would show up here on the dashboard. On the GHL, it's very similar. If we go to webcam, this is where you would set up your webcam. You hit an add. You can call it whatever you want, so we'll just call it webcam. You hit next. And very similar, uh, it will do motion JPEG, HTML5, and it'll just do an image. Very similar to the Apex. However, the Apex does give you uh, two additional features, as I mentioned, the uh, OGG and the WebM format. And that's where you would do the webcam. Now, on both of them, as I mentioned earlier, they will show up on the dashboard. This is where the webcam shows up, right in here. So if you had a webcam, that is where it would show up. So now we'll go back to the Apex, and we'll go on to the next feature, which is Notes. So in the Apex, it does allow you to create notes. You can create a happy note, a sad note, a dead note, or you can uh, just create any note, pretty much. So we'll click on that, and this is where you put the type in. Either it was good, bad, ugly. You can also put maintenance. You can say if it was an event or just a basic, you can put the level, and this is basically will tell you, depending on which user is on there, what they can see. You can include a comment, so for instance, we can put, um, if this was good, we can put uh, color growth is good. Looked at coral today, and looks good. And this would be a note that you can put. You can change the time and date, so for instance, let's just put a note for August 19th. So this was uh, about a couple weeks ago, and we'll say OK. And there is some notes that we've put in for September and October. So those are two notes that you can add. You can also go up here, and this is where you would add the specific notes. You can also go from the dashboard, as we mentioned. OK, so now on the GHL, you need to go to the logbook. So you'll click on the three dots. You'll hit logbook. And you go to categories first. This is where you assign what the category is. Is it a measurement value? Is it a maintenance? Or is it a reminder? In this case, it's a note. And we're going to say uh, good notes, for example. And good notes will have a color of, yeah, blue is fine. So we'll hit blue. And we'll say these are good notes, for example. We'll say add. Now you have a category of all your good notes. You go to events. And you can now add a note. So in good notes, we're going to say corals are good. We'll give it a good state, and we'll say we can say something like corals looked good today. And just like Apex, you can put it any time. So we'll just put this uh, on August 8th or August 3rd. We'll say uh, done and add. So now there is our notes. For this, you can edit it, of course, at any time. You can delete it. And, of course, you can filter your items. So if you want to only see events or only reminders, if you only want to see specific categories, this is where you can filter all your notes. So we'll go back to Apex. So we have our notes right here. So moving on, we're going to go to log measurements. One of the things that is distinctly different about the Apex is its log measurements, and I'll explain why. So when we do log measurements, we have the ability to select right here what kind of log it is. We can do KH, calcium, iodine, magnesium. You can also just put any log measurement. So you could put in here other, and you could put, for instance, salinity, and you can put in your salinity that day. It was 35 uh, PPT, for instance. And then you can go into the comments and say PPT value just so you know it is a PPT value. So we'll say OK. And now we have our salinity right here. 
and it is green because it's other, and it's a PPT value. Now, let's say we wanted to put in our alkalinity. We could go to here to KH. It's automatically going to pull up alkalinity, and here is the largest difference between the GHL and the Apex. It actually has test kits built in. So it has API, Aquaforest, HANA, Red Sea, and it will actually do the conversion for you. So for instance, if we did HANA, some of you out there might have the DKH meter, but some of you might have the PPM meter. And some of us know if they have a PPM meter that you have to do a conversion. So if I put in, it was 250 parts per million, that would measure at 14 DKH. Now let's say I put in 168, it's gonna measure it's 9.4. Now again, you can change the date, you can change the time, and you can also include a comment. So we'll pop in alkalinity here. So now we have alkalinity. Now another great feature is that if you were using any type of color-coded test such as nitrate, it actually has the color code color chart here. So for instance, if I go to API, it has it, Red Sea, and it shows lower high. So if you were to lose the color card, for instance, this will actually tell you what the color is automatically, which I think is really neat. So if I wanted to add nitrate and my Red Sea said it was this color, which is very close to the color, then I can say there's eight, and now I've added nitrate in there. Um, and nitrate is right here. You can see I put in an eight right there. Now let's go back to the GHL and show you how you do measurements here. So again, we're gonna do categories, we're gonna have an add, and we're gonna call this measurement values. Okay, so this is where you can put the measurement values, but one of the biggest differences you'll notice is it doesn't have the ability to know which test kit it is, which I find to be really cool on the Apex side. You can now you can change the range and you can set what you want the PPM value to be, but that's about it. So this is gonna be magnesium and we're gonna change the color to red just so it's easier for us to know that this is magnesium and that's our measurement value. And then we'll come over here and we will add that event which was magnesium, and we will put the value in. It's a little bit different. You gotta have a category, and then you gotta put the actual value in. So let's say we put 1450, and we hit add, and there's our magnesium value. And then we can, of course, go to the chart and see that we had something today, and there's a little uh, red measurement value right there. So let's go back to the apex and go on to the next thing. So the next thing on the Apex is reminders. So if we click on the plus here on reminders, you can set up a reminder to send you a push notification or a email or a text, depending on how you have your notifications set up. So if we go to title, we can set up the title, for instance, as anything we want. So let's call it, uh, I don't know, we wanna remind ourselves that uh, we need a water change. So we'll do water change please do water change. And we'll say that we want this to reoccur and we want it to reoccur every two weeks. And this is where the start date is. Let's say on, on Saturday, we wanna be alerted. So let's say we wanna change a time on this. We'll click on this and we'll hit time and then we can change a time. Let's say we wanna be alerted at, I don't know, 11 a.m. Say okay. And now we have a water change alert that's going to give us a water change every other week like this. So now let's show you how to do it on the GHL. So we'll go to GHL. We've got three lines. Go to Reminder. We'll say Add. Now, the Reminder is very different here on the Apex. First of all, when you do the Reminder, it's going to ask you how many days until the Reminder. Whereas on the Apex, it actually has a date and time. So for instance, if I want to be reminded in five days, and then repeat it every five days, this is how you would do it. And you say water change. Now notice that there is no way here to set up what day to start it on and what time to remind you. And that's how you do reminders on the GHL. So one of the differences between the GHL and the Apex is voice control. Apex has voice control using Amazon devices. And that's what this little microphone is for. 
Now we're going to go to my other tank to demonstrate this. If we go to Reef Automation, which is my larger system here in the home, and I go to Voice Control, you will see that I have a status report set up for my reef temp, my reef salt, my fish temp, and my fish salt. Now it uses Amazon devices. It currently doesn't support Google devices, but I'm sure that'll be something in the future that is added. It's also in beta status, as you can see. So that's something that's going to be added probably down the road. So to do that, all you have to do is say this to your device. Alexa, ask Apex for a status report. The temperature probe named our temp is 76.1 degrees. The salinity probe named our salt is 34.9 parts per thousand. The temperature probe named F temp is 79.5 degrees. And the salinity probe named F salt is 34.4 parts per thousand. So that's how the voice control works. And again, you can do a number of other things. You can do feed the tanks, maintenance, a uh, number of things you can do with voice control. As I mentioned, GHL uh, does not have that feature. I'm not sure if they will ever have that feature, but it is not supported here. So next we will go, so the next feature is the system tree, which is right here, and they call it system. Now this is a little bit more advanced for advanced users, but one of the great features about this is it's, by, if you have a lot of things, it's very easy to find things with this. So for instance, I have my main system right here, and then here's my alarms, my probes, my switch outlets, all my uh, zero to tens and all of my outlets. And I can easily zoom in, zoom out and move this around and get to something right, right there very, very easily. So for instance, if I needed to get to my switch outlet one right there, click on that and I'm right back. If I wanted to get to my power outlets and I wanted to get to my uh, eighth outlet, I just click right there. And I find that to be very useful, especially if you have a lot of things. Now on GHL, they have something uh, a little bit similar, but it's not the same at all. And that is on the dashboard, you can add and subtract things to the dashboard and then have quick selections for it. So for instance, if you wanted to get to a flow sensor, you would add it here and you can just click on it. So if I click on a switch channel, it goes right to it. Um, one thing I don't like about the switch channels is they don't really tell you which power bar they're hooked up to. Um, you can also, of course, click right to a sensor and get to it. So the difference here on the Apex is you have the system tree, which shows you everything at once, whereas in the GHL, you have to go to your dashboard and add tiles if you want to quickly get to things. So the next thing we're going to discuss is the users. If you wanted to give your Apex authorization for other people, this is where you would go. You go to authorization, and then it has a couple of different access levels, view, control, program, manager, and the owner, which of course you would be the owner. But if we come up here, we can add a friend, we can add a family member, and you can give them specific uh, levels of support. So for instance, if you wanted them to just be able to control it, you can give them support. You can also give them just an ability to see everything. So it's got a number of levels of support, and what you do is you put in their Apex username, so they would need an Apex account or a Fusion account, and then they can have access. So that's really a great feature on the Apex. Now the GHL has something similar, so what you do is you have to actually log out of the system or disconnect, and then you would get your My GHL right here, and there's a little gear icon next to it. So you'd hit the Add button, and then you put an email address of the person you wish to share with. So for this demonstration, we'll just put in some random email address. And then you'll notice that you have read access and read and write access. So read access is pretty much the same thing as view on the Apex. And read and write is full access, full programming, full control, full everything. So there isn't a programming mode or a control mode. It's a read and write access. And then I'm not sure what the no access is for, but no access would basically disable them. And I'm not sure why you would disable them. You can just delete them right here. So that's how you add user functionality or additional users to be able to control or view your GHL system. So that's uh, most of the features between the two units. Now, in the next episode, we're going to go over to displays, which are very different. And the following episodes, we're going to go over some power management, and some graphing, 
We showed you a little bit of the graphing today, but we're going to get more in depth uh, of the differences between the two. So hopefully you liked the video. You can see all of the GHL versus Apex series right here. And if you like the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up below. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.